Hi, I'm Kelly Hushin, the online editor for the Trade Tech blog, and I'm here with Leslie Boni. She's a professor of finance at the University of New Mexico, and we are here in San Francisco at Trade Tech. And uh, you just gave a great presentation about uh, grading broker or grading algorithms, grading broker algorithms, and um, you talked about a model that you guys have developed, and uh, it's kind of it hasn't developed an official title, but we can call it the <laughs> ordered probit approach. Ordered probit approach. Or, or people who know the Kissel and Glantz ranking method that they described in their optimal trading strategies, the last chapter of that book. It's really the two step is that ranking method that they describe is the first step, and we simply tried to extend it in an ordered probit uh, framework to provide a statistical significance element to it that was missing. Okay, so can you talk a little bit of, just briefly about how you developed it and what it aims to do exactly? I know you kind of just sure. over it briefly, but just a little, sure. little more detail. Sure, the, the problem that, um, I had when I was helping write algorithms or working with clients to measure transaction cost analysis before I went back to the university life, a, a common problem was, su suppose you have one of the simplest algorithms, which is a volume weighted average price, a VWAP type algorithm. It's quite common to say, hey, my all of my brokers VWAP algos, they're coming in on average within a few basis points of the volume weighted average price during the period or on the day. However, if you start to look at just the volatility that we have, some days are so much more volatile than others, you might say, well, if, if my broker's algorithm missed by 50 basis points, uh, was it because there was just a lot of volatility on the day, or is the broker's algo not as good as the others? So it's really a method to try to deal with these very volatile intraday trading conditions that people are faced with. Now some of the approaches in the past from doing transaction cost analysis of algorithm performance have involved sort of what we would call pre-trade models, um, Omgram type models people might be familiar with, but it's, it's a very heroic pre-trade model that can deal with these kinds of volatility conditions. So that's, that's what we're trying to address is can we really tell the difference in one broker's algorithm being consistently an outperformer versus another, or are they pretty much all the same? So VWAP is one type of algo class. Certainly implementation shortfall is uh, e even more uh, challenging to try to measure the performance of and compare across brokers. So what are some of the challenges that come with trying to actually um, test this model out? Because I know somebody asked you in the end of the presentation right. how, to what, test how to test it. Right. So one of the most difficult pieces is anytime you're doing transaction cost analysis is just the integrity of the data that you have to work with. So just the sheer volume of market data. This model, the nice thing about this approach is you don't have to have quote data. And, and quote data is many times larger, and certainly if you try to use depth of book uh, quote data, it's, it's a massive amount of data, much larger data to work with than just if you have to use the trade prints on the day. So this model does require that you have all the transaction prices, all the trade prints on the day, like you could get from the New York Stock Exchange TAC data, or a lot of people have their own data feeds but you don't have to rely on quote data. So we believe that that's also uh, helpful right. as far as. But the challenge again, you, you have to have the, the trade price data and you have to have a good way to measure what the relevant trade data are. For example, if you gave your broker an implementation shortfall algo to work, uh, order to work with their algo, then how, what kind of urgency did you give them? How much time did you give them? Make sure you use only the marketable prices if you gave them a limit order. So some of the details are just making sure that you figure out how to partition the trade data that you're looking at so that you, the client, the user, um, you get the credit you deserve if you used a limit price, uh, if you gave a certain urgency to work, and then make sure that the credit for if, if the algo is an outperformer that the algo order gets the credit for the portion it took risk on, but doesn't get credit for the risks that you, the user, used when you established the limit price and the parameters. So those are some of the, 
the details that, that get right. involved. Moving away from this model, just to kind of ask you more generally, how can traders evaluate algos? What are some of um, the ways that they can look at an algo and determine which one to use and whose to use? Well, I have to tell you, this, this was why, <laughs> that was a question we kept getting and this is why we came up with this method because um, we came up short in trying to use the existing methods. We found it to be a very challenging problem. One of the things we liked about coming up with this method is it, it also um, helped focus uh, just in thinking about how you do the measurement. If you try to use this approach, it really kind of forces you to sit down with the broker and say, this is how we're going to measure you. These are our objectives. Which of your algos should be using and what kind of parameters should be using? So the other thing was it helped provide a, a framework. I just don't think there's anybody in the world, hopefully, who's out there who's using a broker's algo without having these kind of heart-to-hearts with them to make sure that they don't, don't end up with a flash crash situation where they get a, you know, algo gone wild because maybe they didn't understand what the algo was going to do. Right. Well, we've heard so much about this method, um, both in the presentation and a little bit here, but uh, we, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and uh, what you do at the <laughs> university? People don't care about that. I'm a, I, 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 we I'll care. tell you that right now at the University of New Mexico, I'm teaching two classes in particular that I love. The students are terrific, and they're managing real money. As many other colleges also have, we have a student-managed fund program, and so our students are managing a $2 million portfolio of real money of the Regents Foundation money to invest that for them, and it's an all-equity portfolio, and they've outperformed the S&P benchmark for the last four years. They're up 900 basis points, so they're thrilled, and so much so that the state of New Mexico, as of last Tuesday, just voted to, their state investment office just voted to have the students manage $5 million of their money, um, and so that'll be both in equities and fixed income. So it's a great opportunity for the students. Uh, we have great practitioners, institutional money managers who advise the students, and so we're thrilled to have that opportunity to teach students. So it's the best of both worlds for me. Thank you for asking. Yeah, no, of course. <laughs> Are you seeing students um, become more and more uh, understanding of all of these technical things? I mean, um, as, as you go on teaching, how, how are the trends with students and their receptiveness to these very technical you know, issues? Well, as you can imagine, it's a very competitive time and, and students realize that it's tough times in the economy. They're thrilled to get any experience that they can. Um, and these are, I'd have to tell you, it's an exciting time to be teaching because they're, they, they want to know. They want to know what they can do to, to hit the ground running when they go out there and hopefully find jobs in this tough economy. Yeah, well yeah. thank you so much. Thank I'll you. let you get back. I know oh, yeah. you have a round table to thank meet, you, Kelly. so we'll check back in with you, but thanks a lot. Thank you.